Donald Trump has spoken in his first campaign rally since his attempted assassination last weekend, addressing thousands of supporters in the swing states of Michigan amid tight security. Mr. Trump claimed his Democratic opponents were the enemies of democracy. Our correspondent Jenny Kumar reports. Thousands turned out for this first rally since the shooting. Security checks meant long waits, but many were determined to show their support. After what happened last week, I hadn't planned on attending a rally this year because I've been to so many in the uh, 2016 and 2020 election. But I'm here to show solidarity with Trump that we do stand behind him. And as so long as he stays in the fight, we're going to stand behind him. No, he's, be he's bigger and better than ever. No. no, we love him and I think he really, really um, gelled the country brought us together. A few days ago, after his near-death experience, Donald Trump called for unity in the country. Yet, within minutes of speaking at the rally, he attacked his rival. But what they do is misinformation and disinformation, and they keep saying, he's a threat to democracy. I'm saying, what the hell did I do for democracy? Last week, I took a bullet for democracy. What did I do against democracy? It felt like a pop concert. The former president continued to sing the old songs, attacking the media, migrants and Joe Biden. The crowd cheered. His vice president pick warmed the audience up, speaking for the first time as Donald Trump's running mate at a rally. But there's some bad news, actually. Um, the vice president, Kamala Harris, she doesn't like me. Ka Kamala Harris said something to the effect that, that I have no loyalty to this country. Well, I don't know, Kamala. I did serve in the United States Marine Corps and build a business. What the hell have you done other than collect the check? J.D. Vance is seen as someone who can help his party win crucial working class votes here and in other key battleground states. Donald Trump won in Michigan in 2016, but it flipped back to Joe Biden in 2020. The Republicans say their party is the most united it's been for decades, and they say that contrasts with the Democrats as questions continue over the future of Joe Biden in the presidential race. Nearly three dozen Democrats have called for Mr Biden to withdraw. The president says he'll continue to campaign next week after isolating with COVID. He insists he's staying in the race to win it. Jenny Kumar, BBC News, Michigan. The BBC's Gary O'Donoghue was at last week's rally where Mr Trump was attacked. This time he was listening to Mr Trump's speech from inside the arena in Michigan. Nearly two hours on his feet, Donald Trump is back on the election campaign trail, attacking migrants, attacking the media, attacking Joe Biden for the way he walks, for the way he talks, attacking his IQ. The crowd responded with huge cheers practically every sentence. Thousands were left outside. If you expected unity to come after that assassination attempt, then you'll be waiting a long time because Donald Trump is singing the old songs and his supporters love it. This will be a moment that Democrats will worry about. They remain divided. They remain unsure about Joe Biden as their candidate. And while they're that, they can't take on Donald Trump and the juggernaut of his campaign. In another development, officials investigating the attempted assassination of Donald Trump say they believe the gunman flew a drone over the rally site to scope it out ahead of the shooting. Our correspondent in Washington, David Willis, has more details. Reports here suggest that shortly before 20-year-old Thomas Crooks was able to open fire on that rally being addressed by Donald Trump, he may indeed have surveyed the area from the sky. Reports suggest that officials found in his car, as well as a bulletproof vest, two explosive devices and three fully loaded magazines, a drone which they believe could have been used to help him select the spot from which he subsequently opened fire. Now, if 
true, this represents an extraordinary security lapse on the part of the U.S. Secret Service, which apparently became suspicious of Thomas Crooks about an hour before the assassination attempt took place, only to lose him in the crowd. Now, unconfirmed reports here also suggest that Thomas Crooks visited the site of the attempted assassination at least once before that rally took place. Now, a search of Thomas Crooks' cell phone data has so far failed to identify any particular motive for this attack, but there have been calls for the director of the uh, Secret Service, Kimberly Cheetle, to resign, and she, along with the FBI director, Christopher Wray, is due to give evidence on this matter to Congress this coming week. That was David Willis reporting there.